This presentation will focus on the imaging planes that you will acquire during cardiac MRI. So let's get started. What are the planes that we're going to talk about? Well, obviously the standard planes of axial, coronal, and sagittal. Then we'll discuss how to get a two-chamber view, a short-axis view, a four-chamber view, as well as a left ventricular outflow tract view, and a trans-aortic valve view, and finally, we'll discuss how to get good candy cane views of the aorta. So in general, we're always going to start with a three-plane localizer. So we have our axial, coronal, and sagittal images. And then from that, we're going to get another stack of axial images. We're basically going to generally acquire this from above the aortic arch to below the level of the heart. So here's our axial stack of haste images. So these are just a black blood set of images. And the main thing here is to look for any gross abnormalities within the chest and also to then set up our two-chamber view. So we find our image in the axial haste stack where we can see the left ventricle nicely and then we're going to line up to acquire our two-chamber view using the interventricular septum. So we're going to line up here parallel to the interventricular septum in the middle of the LV. And we're going to acquire a two-chamber view. This can either be a static image or a dynamic cine image. Here we have our two-chamber view, so we have our left atrium and our left ventricle. And now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up and we're going to acquire a stack of short axis images off of this two-chamber view. In general, we're going to want to align the plane of our short axis images with the mitral valve. So here this image, this line is at the level of the mitral valve and it's lined up in the same plane as the mitral valve. And in addition, we're going to want to acquire a few slices into the left atrium so that as you'll see later as we set up our left ventricular outflow tract view, we're going to use this set of short axis images and so it's best if we have a couple images that extend into the left atrium. So here's our stack of short axis images. You can see that we do have one at least that goes into the left atrium. And then we've got our stack going all the way through the left ventricle. Now our next set of images that we're going to acquire are four chamber projections or four chamber images. And in order to do that we're going to set up on two planes. First is we're going to go perpendicular on our stack of short axis images, so get an image that's in the middle of the left ventricle, and then you're going to line up so that the line, the plane, goes through the center of the left ventricle, and then pretty much out through where the anterior free wall and inferior free wall would meet, or basically aligning it with the bottom of the heart, kind of the angle of the bottom of the heart. And then in addition, on your two-chamber view, you're going to want to make sure that it's lined up along the long axis of the heart. So it should divide the heart in half, top, and bottom on the two-chamber view. So here's our four-chamber view. In this case, it's a cine image, and you can see very nicely the LV, the left atrium, the RV, the right atrium. You can see very nicely here the tricuspid valve, and here you can see very nicely the mitral valve. From this four chamber view, then we're going to set up our stack of axial images to perform for functional evaluation. And we're going to want to line this up along the valve plane. So going across from the mitral valve to the tricuspid valve. So we're going to line that up and then we acquire our stack of short axis images. Here you can see two images from our short axis stack. This one's more towards the base. You can just start to see the papillary muscle here. This one's more mid to apical where we can see very nicely the papillary muscles. Now our next thing is to set up the left ventricular outflow tract view. And as I mentioned earlier, it's real important on that short axis scalp views that we got early on after the two chamber views to get an image into the left atrium. The reason for that is, is we're going to use that to be able to set up our left ventricular outflow tract view. So here you can see on that short axis stack we've scrolled all the way up. You can see very nicely the left atrium here with the aorta, the pulmonary artery here. So on this stack of short axis images, we're going to line up right down the middle of the aorta, divide the left atrium in half, 
and that's going to give us our first LVOT view. So you can see here, here's left ventricle, and here's the aorta going out, and the aortic valve here. Left atrium is back here. Now we're going to place another line right down the middle of the aorta, and that's going to give us our second left ventricular outflow tract view. And here you can see very nicely the left ventricle, the aortic valve, and the aorta going this way. So there's our two left ventricular outflow tract views. Now using these two views, we can set up our trans aortic valve view. So we need a double oblique view in order to be able to see the aortic valve on FOSS. So we're going to line that up. We're going to line up along the plane of the aortic valve here on our LVOT1 and also along the plane of the aortic valve here on our LVOT2. And that's going to give us very nicely an on FOSS view of our aortic valve. You can see here that it's kind of open. This is a bicuspid aortic valve with the fish mouth configuration. Aorta is this whole area and then the leaflets are here. Now to set up our candy cane view, so that's our view that we want to be able to see the whole aorta in one view, we're going to use a tool um, that's available for us on our machine called the three point tool. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to put a dot here in the ascending aorta a dot here in the descending aorta and then to get the final projection of that plane a dot here in the center of the aortic arch and by doing that we get a very nice candy cane view of the aorta thank you very much for your time and attention and please feel free to contact me with questions